Faith is taking that first step when you can't see the whole staircase. And this is exactly what I launched out to do in April of 2008. With great excitement, plenty of enthusiasm, and exceeding joy, I launched my dream company, not on two, not on four, but on 800 square feet. An enormous leap of faith. So big and scary was this leap of faith that I remember sitting on the unfinished floor, petrified and wondering, Maxwell Kihara, how on earth are you going to pay for rent, let alone payroll and other accompanying costs? By the grace of God, however, the company bloomed and blossomed. We did grow in capital, revenue, and size. In fact, I dare say, we were doing so well that I decided to spread my wings of investments in other areas. After all, I felt like I was a true Viking king of the entrepreneurship kingdom. Mr. Contest Chair, Toastmasters, and invited guests, what do you do when your best laid schemes go askew? When your well thought out, meticulously calculated winning strategy collapses before your very own eyes and scatters to the four winds. Out of nowhere, from nowhere and with no warning, my business empire came crashing down like a house of cards. Downcast and despaired, like the mouse in the famous poem of Mice and Men by Robert Burns. And I quote, Oh mouse, you're not alone in proving that foresight may be vain, that the best laid schemes of both mice and men often go askew and leave us nothing but grief and pain for promised joy. My heart ached and pain in terrible anguish, and to this anguish there seemed to be no end. The death knell came. The death knell was when I had to shut down my offices. <sighs> my offices. I do not know whether to refer to them as my offices or my abode. For you see, this is where more than two-thirds of my life had been spent. I was depressed, discouraged, and utterly devastated. Friends and guests, failure at some point in life is inevitable. But giving up, giving up is unforgivable. Through my experience, I came across a cocktail of three simple precepts. Precepts that allowed me to dream again and set me on the track of recovery. I grieved, I dreamed, and I rose to execute one more time. Grieving is the foremost and cardinal precept. When it happens to you, grieve about it. Weep, lament, cry. In fact, for heaven's sake, throw yourself not a pity party, but the mother of all pity parties. <laughs> you see, grieving is very important because it allows us to release the energy that is, lost, is bound to the lost object, person, or like in my case, experience. Then this energy can be reinvested elsewhere. For if we do not grieve entirely, we will always find reinvesting and reinventing most difficult because part of us will always remain tied to our past and we cannot move. Having gone through this sad but mandatory phase, we transcend to the next one. Dream. <coughs> Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning, says the good book. A new day is here. A new dawn is here. It is time to dream again. So wipe your tears. Cast off the morning garment. Light some scented candles and enjoy a hot bath. Put some music on. 
and dance to the beat. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters, T. E. Lawrence said that all men dream, but not equally. Those who dream at night in the dusty recess of their mind wake up in the day to find it was vanity. But the dreamers of day, these are dangerous men, Wangondo. For with open eyes, they make their dream possible. Become a dreamer of day. I can see some lovely smiles, meaning some of us have started dreaming. Fantastic. So what do we do with our new birthed dreams? This ushers us to the third and last precept. Execution. Kindly look at your neighbor and tell them, execute. It is the simplest of them all, but the least achieved. Colin Powell put it superbly well when he said, a dream does not become reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination, and hard work. I choose to be laborless on this precept so that you can labor more on executing it. Two years ago, through this simple cocktail of grieving, dreaming, and executing, I did start. This time, not on 800 square feet, but from this simple briefcase with three items in it. The first one was my invoice book. The second one was my tax register machine. The third one, and most important, was the tons and tons of faith, hope, and optimism that you can see. <laughs> As I speak to you, we are on 300 square feet. 800, here we come. You too can dream again. You too can start afresh. Remember the iconic words of Henry Ford, that failure is simply an opportunity to begin again. This time though, more intelligently. Mr. Contest Chair. <laughs>